fit is critical for all PFDs. Too loose a fit and the device may ride up on your torso while your face slips toward the water. Look for a device with small arm hold and make sure there's no gap between your shoulder and the shoulder of your PFD when you're floating in the water. To eliminate the problem of having a PFD ride up on your body, choose a model with a crotch strap like this one. Fit is especially critical for children. To protect a child, buy a device that fits. Don't buy a big one and attempt to let him or her grow into it. The child needs something that works now, not next year. The more fully the device covers your critical heat loss areas and reduces the flushing action of cold water against your torso, the more thermal protection it provides. This jacket-style PFD features a beaver tail that not only keeps it from riding up on your body, but reduces heat loss from the critical groin area. Keep in mind, however, that no PFD offers enough thermal protection for extended survival in cold water. Even full-length deck suits don't compare to immersion suits in terms of preserving body heat. Only an approved immersion suit should be regarded as an effective abandoned ship device for cold and remote conditions. The information published by PFD manufacturers with respect to the hypothermia protection afforded by their products is based on calm water testing. In the ocean, rising seas cause the insulation value of all PFDs to degrade rapidly as cold water intrudes and flushes around the body. There simply is nothing else that compares to an immersion suit in terms of conserving body heat, although some PFDs are significantly better than others. Average sized people require about 14 pounds of buoyancy to keep their heads and necks out of choppy water. Some require as many as 18 or 19 pounds. A type 1 PFD has a minimum of 22 pounds of buoyancy and most have more. This model has 35 pounds of buoyancy. Remember, the type 1 is the only device that will turn you face up with a high degree of certainty. Some of the other types may turn you face down if you try the help position. Generally speaking, the more buoyancy, the better, especially if it's high on the chest and behind the neck. Lots of buoyancy behind the back tends to roll you over. Ideally, the device should float you face up, feet down, head inclined 20 to 30 degrees back from the vertical. The water level on your chest should be no higher than the armpits, preferably lower. You should be able to maintain the help position with only occasional swimming strokes.